All right, guys, so now that we've calibrated our scope uh, and you see the, the two volt peak to peak on the, the screen, just as it is coming in right now, uh, next thing we're ready to do is uh, use the transformer. So uh, this next part what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a transformer. Uh, we're, looking, we're gonna look at the AC sine wave coming off of the transformer. The transformer that we are using uh, is, it says on your, your lab, it's a 115 to 25 volts. So you can see here, we've got the 115 volts on the primary, right, at 60 hertz. So again, we have 120 in the shop, or a value that's close to 120. Uh, these guys are rated for 115. So your secondary voltage, because this primary versus secondary ratio is not the same, being that this is 115 and we've got 120 in the shop, then the values are gonna be a little bit different on the secondary compared to what's actually stated on the transformer. So this guy is a 25 volt center tap transformer uh, with one amp capable of coming out of this secondary here. Okay, so what we want to do first is it says uh, make sure prior to energizing the primary that you haven't shorted out the secondary. It sucks when you guys short out the, uh, the secondary. Now be careful with these, uh, these boards here. They have um, connections. So you can see here that there's this black line here. That means that this and this is connected in together. So they're all shorted out together. So what we wanted to do is drop in each of these points. Now, these are color coded. If we take a look at this transformer, it has the two external connections here that are color coded red. Those are your line one and line two off of the secondary. And then it is center tapped. You may be able to make out that this has a yellow stripe here denoting that it's the center tap. Uh, we've color coded it blue for the center tap. So prior to putting this into the wall and plugging it in, let's connect this into uh, this point right here, this guy right here, and maybe this guy right here. You can see there that, um, if I zoom in, that we haven't shorted anything out. We've put it on individual terminals there, and there are no black lines on the Festo trainer boards that um, connect any of those guys together. Uh, if you do connect it up, so don't do this, but if you did connect it up like this, then essentially you're shorting out the secondary of the transformer. Um, and then you'll walk away, go for a coffee, and the transformer will be on fire on your lab bench for your partner to put out. So put it into individual connections that have no connection to anything else on the board. Okay. Once we then have that ready, then we're in a point where we can actually plug this bad boy in. So we'll plug it into the wall energize the transformer. Okay, they get a little bit warm to uh, the touch over time. So if you don't need it plugged in, then disconnect the, uh, the connections. And if you're leaving to go for a coffee or something, always uh, disconnect anything that you've connected onto the board there. Okay, next thing what we're gonna do is it says, using the bench multimeter in the scope, measure the voltage values uh, and put them into the chart. So we've got uh, a number of different uh, points there. So we've got our transformer here with the primary, right? We're gonna put 122 the primary. Then we're gonna see uh, our individual voltages on the secondary. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll first turn on the multimeter here. So let's just zoom over to the multimeter here. Sorry. So we'll turn this guy on. Okay, we're gonna be taking voltage readings. So these guys will not even be in there when you get this unit. So what you want to do is we're going to put the black lead into this common here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the red one into this connector right here. This one is for voltage and for ohmic readings. Okay. And those correspond to uh, the two meter leads that you can find at the back of the shop. Okay. At that point, we're going to be taking um, AC voltage readings. Just move this over so it's out of the fluorescent light there. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll hit AC voltage. Okay, at that point, what we can do is we can connect it into our circuit. And for the first one, we're trying to look at, uh, for the our table here, we're looking at the 
meter readings for with the uh, with the meter, and then we're going to take a look at them um, with the scope. So the first one we need to look at is the voltage C to D, and we've labeled C to D as one of the external connections to a center tap. So we'll go from an external connection to a center tap, and we can see there that that's what 14.24 volts. Okay. Now, depending on what voltage uh, is coming into the shop at that point, then you may see uh, different values. You can see that depending on what pressure I place onto the connections, uh, then the voltage is changing slightly, whether I have a good connection with the, uh, the leads or not. Okay, the next one we're gonna do, uh, and that corresponds to, just to, to show you what we've done here, we've now, uh, we're now taking a, a meter reading between one of the external connections and the center tap. Okay, the next one that we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, between the other side of the transformer and the center tap. Okay, and if no one has smoked this transformer on a previous lab, then this voltage should be identical to the previous voltage. So previous voltage reading was uh, 14.24 and this guy is 14.22 volts AC. Okay, last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the, the voltage between C and E. We've noted that C and E are the external line one and line two on that transformer. Well, if that's a center tap transformer, we were looking at half of the voltage and now we should see the full voltage from line one to line two. So now we've got, uh, what, 28.45 volts. Okay, all of these values are AC. Remember this is a transformer and transformers only let uh, AC through. Now this volt, this transformer was rated for 25 volts, uh, but we're seeing 28 volts. Well, that's a little messed. Uh, but the reason for that is because remember that the primary of the transformer was rated for 115. We're putting 120 volts into this transformer. So instead of go being a 115 to, 20 to 25 volts, we're now putting 120 volts in and we're getting a higher voltage out. Ratio still stays the same, uh, but because we put a little bit more voltage into the primary, we're getting a little bit more voltage out on the secondary. So we're seeing 28 uh, and a half volts coming out of this uh, transformer. Okay, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, the voltage that's coming in from the source. Now be very careful when you're doing this, please. Make sure that you're on voltage, not on current, or you're gonna blow up uh, the meter leads, and you're like, oh, well, I'll never do that. Um, guaranteed there'll be somebody in class who puts it on the wrong, um, the wrong setting or in the wrong uh, probe point and then takes, tries to take a meter reading uh, off of the plug. If you're not comfortable taking this voltage from the plug, then call your instructor over and um, he will take the voltage reading for you. In fact, I may just take a voltage reading at the beginning of class and we'll just use that for everybody's values. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to put the, the meter probes into the plug with the hot and the neutral. Okay, and then we're just gonna take that voltage reading and at this point I got nothing coming in um, because I'm not making very good contact with the, uh, with the plug here what's going on <clears throat> okay so if you're a donkey like me uh, you won't even notice that there are um, two safety um, shrouds on the meter leads. So I didn't see the, the voltage initially, uh, but then when I take off the two safety shrouds, donkey, then uh, you'll see the voltage. So we got, remember that it's not exactly 120 volts, right? It depends on what's connected in on the, uh, on the floor, right? Depending on what loading is on the transformer as well, that'll determine your your voltage, it also depends on how long the run is to that plug from the actual panel. So at this point, we're not seeing 120, we're seeing 119 point, uh, let's call it 119.45 coming in from this, this source there, 119.45 volts. Okay, so then you're wondering, um, 
what the value is um, for the RMS and what the value is for the peak. Um, so that voltage that we're seeing there from the plug, that's the root mean squared. That's the, the RMS value. Anytime that you're taking a meter reading, you're going to be reading the RMS value. So you can transfer that over from digital multimeter at 119.45 and then drop it in as the voltage RMS as well. Uh, what we'll do is we'll calculate that uh, voltage and find our peak. Now the peak voltage, if you have your RMS, so our RMS voltage is uh, 119.45 and we're going to multiply that by 1.414. And that gives me a peak value of 168.9 volts peak. Okay, so my peak voltage is 168.9. That peak voltage uh, is the maximum voltage that's coming out of that sine wave. Remember that um, the RMS is the DC equivalent, or it's the root mean squared. So the sine wave is always changing values. Um, the effective voltage is, uh, is 119. But the peak voltage, which it hits twice a cycle, and the once in the positive, once in the negative, is 168.9 volts peak. Beauty. Okay. Now we've taken our source voltage, and the next thing we need to do now is we need to look at uh, this circuit with the scope. So next thing we need to do is, um, once our scope is calibrated, then we're going to look at the scope and we'll connect into uh, a number of different points. Let me just put the camera here so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take, uh, take off the calibration here and initially what are we looking for? We're looking for uh, the outside voltage from C to D. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect in the, the ground pin on our connector here to the midpoint of the transformer and then we're going to connect up here so we can see the sine wave. Okay, looking at the screen there, um, I can't see the sine wave at all on the screen. So um, remember that this is set for one volt per division. So let's first, let's change this so that we have um, a number of volts per division. Um, then we can change the time per division and we're slowly seeing a sine wave coming in. Beauty, okay. So looking at the, uh, the camera here, the frame rate may not match with uh, what's going on on the, on the screen. So that looks a little bit more stable on the, uh, on the camera here. Let's just change the, the trigger here. And now you can see the full sine wave um, coming out of here. So right now we have five volts per division. Um, and so we said that this voltage here um, had a value of 14.24 volts uh, but looking at the the vo voltage here let's see we've got um, 5 volts per division so we've got 5 10 15 almost 20 volts up to the top of that sine wave so what's going on there I thought we said we had 14.22 volts uh, if you take that 14.22 volts and multiply it by 1.414 then that gives you a value of 20 volts. So we should see, based on the calculations, if you take, um, <clears throat> let's just do this here. If you take uh, the 14.24, easy now, 14.24, times 1.414, that gives you a value of 20.14 volts. Okay, the value that we looked at um, with the meter was the RMS value, right? Well, now we're looking at the peak value. So each of these is good for five volts per division. We've got five, 10, 15, 20. It's hard to discern exactly, uh, you know, 20.14, but we saw that 14.24 um, times 1.414 gives us our peak value of 20.14. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the other side of the, uh, the transformer. You'll notice that the, the waveform is going positive here. So let's take a look at the other side of the waveform and we see the exact same uh, voltage on the other side. All right? remember that this was the center tap transformer. So on the other side of the transformer, we should see the exact same voltage. 
right? So again, we're seeing we had a value of 14.22 for the uh, RMS value. And now again, we can see that there's 5, 10, 15, roughly 20 volts peak on this waveform. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to look at the, uh, the external connections from line 1 to line 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this connection here, put it on the outer connection of the, the transformer. So now we're looking at line 1 to line 2. Or on your chart, we are now looking from C to E. Okay, well, at this point, we're at the max volts per division, and we can't see the rest of the waveform. So what are we going to do? Because by changing this, it does nothing, because now we're reducing the volts per division. And I can't see the top of the waveform. So remember that on your scope probe, you have a times 10. So now anything that's now on the screen is now multiplied by 10. So let's go to this point right here. We have 1 volt per division. But remember that each division is multiplied by 10. So now I've got 10, 20, 30, roughly 40 volts as my peak voltage. Okay. Well, what we had was we had uh, 28.45 as our RMS value, right? So we got 28.45, and we're going to multiply that by 1.414. Look at that, 40 volts. That's our peak voltage. Right, so to be precise, 40.23. So we got 40.23 for the, uh, the peak voltage there, right, between uh, C and E. And if we're looking here, we're again on 1 volt per division. We're on times 10, so every division is actually 10 volts, 10, 20, 30, 40 volts peak. Okay, if we're looking at the, the rest of the, the chart there, uh, the peak to peak voltage, well, you just take your peak voltage that we saw earlier and multiply it by 2. So in this case, we've got 40 volts peak, and the peak to peak voltage is 80 volts. Okay, the value that we saw before, that 28.45, um, that was the RMS voltage that we saw on the meter. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to um, go back and just take each step there step by step and draw out the waveforms, right? If you don't see the, uh, the entire waveform there, then change the volts per division till you 